Friends, neighbors, and of course, the YouTube comments section. What is up, my dudes? So today on the bench, we have a Diodario Modular Snake System Stage Box. Now, this has been a very interesting journey for me. I have used this Diodario uh, DB25 stuff for a while. Um, you can go way back to OG Billy YouTube videos and uh, check out the uh, upper right-hand corner of your screen uh, for some modular snake panels and things like that. Um, when I put my, my home studio in back in the year of our Lord 2012, I used this stuff. It's very cool. But I feel like the stage box, I either completely missed it or it wasn't a thing at that time. They only had fans. So basically, the way the Diodario system works is um, they have these DB25 trunk lines, uh, and then they have breakouts. So you can either use uh, female XLR, male XLR, or they have quarter inch. And I think they even have one that's like a hybrid male-female, or the other one is like maybe hybrid XLR quarter inch. But um, without giving too much away and, you know, keep those eyes peeled and popped and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I'm working on a very cool low profile mic splitter right now, uh, for an in-ears rig that I'm building. And, uh, basically a long story long, it has to be a flyable in-ear rig. So the mic split has to be one U. So I'm, I have that pretty much figured out, but, uh, long story sh longer, it's DB25. That's the only way that I can get it all to fit and still split and that kind of thing. So um, I'm entertaining the idea of using these on the end, um, but I wanted to just get one in and and play with it. So, you know, my logic is I can either use this guy as it is and just have a DB25 um, snake on the end as my trunk line uh, if it's, you know, if it's built well enough and, uh, if it's not, I can, uh, see what, what the guts are and then I can probably just fabricate a metal chassis for it. So, uh, for 75 bucks, I didn't even get this at dealer cost. I got it off Amazon. Um, so I don't even know what dealer is. I looked at it and said, damn, 75 bucks for this is pretty good. So, uh, let's open this thing up and see what is inside. Okay, well, look at this. So they have two PCBs on here, and then they have just a ribbon. Wow, they really built this thing like a computer. That's pretty cool. Um, so my first instinct at looking at this, just make sure we're in focus here. My first instinct is, at looking at this is, I, I don't love that these release tabs are exposed. I can definitely see those things getting absolutely bent um, on the first gig. And they're not using Neutrik connectors on this. They're using Lianzon connectors, L-I-A-N-Z-H-A-N. Um, but one of the cool things that they do have on here is that there are four combos on this side and four regular female XLRs on the other. So that's kind of cool. Uh, so to take this thing apart, we are gonna have to pop all of these out. So it doesn't feel like there's a nut. These are probably just PCB mount connections. All right, so we've got our screws loosened here. Let's see how this thing comes apart. Okay, feels like, oh, there we go. All right, so here's the board. Oh, that's cool, they just have a little, this is, I mean, this is very standard stuff. So one of the reasons why I do like DB25 so much is, and one of the reasons why it's so cheap, is it, it basically is using ubiquitous computer technology that's been around since, you know, the 80s. So this is just a saddle, a little saddle connector like this, so let's see. Oh, it doesn't even have keepers on it. It just slides in and out of there, look at that. So here's the PCB. So the way that these jacks are, I mean, this is very common, this, this PCB mount jack. So they're using, um, I wouldn't necessarily call it a wood screw on this, but it is a, a steeper thread non-machine screw because it's not tapped. Uh, it's just going into the plastic here. So that's how this works. 
and then they just take the ribbon cable and split it like this. So all the ribbons go to this DB25 right here. And then that just goes in here like this. So let's see what they've got going on here. I wonder if they've got a common ground. I bet they do. Off camera multimeter. So all I'm doing here is checking pin one. Oh, look at that. I'll be dipped. Interesting. It's cool. I'm kind of thinking they would be cheap and make this a common ground. There's that pin. Cool. So that's pin one. Let's see where pin two is just to get a, a, a wiring diagram. There's pin one, there's pin two. Let's see where pin three is. Cool, that's actually very logical. The way that's, oh, I see, two, one, three. I bet it follows that. Or excuse me, one, two, three. Interesting. Yeah, I like this. This is cool. I, again, I don't love that it's not a Neutrik connector, but, you know, it's uh, for, for road use. I'm a little wary about it. Um, I think I may end up going extra credit and building a little box for this. Um, you know, I figured if nothing else for 75 bucks, it would be worth getting these in and uh and just taking the guts out of them and putting them in something that's more heavy duty so uh this metal is pretty common this is a 0.063 uh is the industry name for it this is steel um it's good it's thin um you need to use this for when you do high density d punches like this so like say for example you wanted to have a, a rack panel and make it one u and put 16 um and put 16 d punches in you'd need to make it out of 063 uh, instead of eighth inch, which is 0.125 for those of you who are uh, getting getting your decimal equivalents in there, um, and it's just it's just enough thickness that it starts to mess with you. So like when people ask us to do higher density panels, there's always a compromise of um, what do you want to do it as. You know, if if you use less connections, you can use thicker metal. Um, if you use more connections, you need to use a thinner metal. And really, why that matters is uh, boxes like this are designed with a flange. Uh, and what a flange does is it's basically a big C. So if you think about like a frame in your car, a chassis kind of thing, this this flange, how this is this is bent like this, prevents this from from caving in. Um, and if it's a non-flange panel, um, you, uh, you you don't you just don't get as much rigidity from it. Uh, and when you do the thicker metals like the eighth inch or the, excuse me, yeah, the eighth inch panel. Um, the, this flange, the thickness of it, just impedes the uh, this distance right here. So they're making this out of 063. So this is one pressed part, the way that this works. I bet they welded the sides, though. That's actually kind of cool. There's a bit of metal working in here. So when you, when you look at this kind of stuff, what I would say is they probably made this thing with a die, and these sides are all folded down like that. They stamped it, then they folded it up, and then they welded the sides and then they polished it, and then this is powder coated. So I mean, you know, you look at that process, I mean, for 75 bucks, this thing kind of rules. You know, and, and as, a, as a builder of, of systems, uh, I always try to, you know, design stuff that can survive nuclear war. Um, sometimes you don't really need that, you know, especially when it's a cost thing. So, you know, will these pins get messed up over time? Yep, they sure will. Does it matter? And will you want to just buy another $75 box? Because, I mean, again, if we were going to do the metalworking for this, I mean, I'm sure that that, that metalworking alone is probably going to be at least 150 bucks. So, you know, is somebody willing to spend 350 you know, ish dollars on this stage box end? I don't know. You guys tell me, comment section. But anyway, I think this is cool. Um, the other thing that, that, you know, I'm kind of playing with is, do you want the box or do you want just a fan of XLRs? And, and I don't know. I think the box is, is convenient. Uh, you can label it. You can put a piece of spike tape right here and just say, you know, input one is the kick drum. Input two is the kick drum. Um, you know, I, I think that's certainly kind of cool. I don't love that this connector doesn't... Uh, it, generally, when you have these, these ribbon connectors, you, you put them into a socket, and then they have these little, these little flappies that come over it and keep it, keep it in so that it doesn't want to vibrate out. And I really do see this as far as going on the road. This, this can definitely vibrate out. 
Um, you know, again, the DB25 stuff is not really meant for the road. It's more studio stuff, but, um, you know, again, for 75 bucks, this is, this is a pretty rocking, a rocking product. So am I going to use this for the on-road, for the road gig? Yeah, I don't know at this point. I'm going to have to think about it. But anyway, I figured if I was taking something apart to evaluate it, I might as well put it on YouTube. So, um, Check back for that mic splitter. I think that's going to be that's going to be cool. 30, 32 channel, uh, one to two split in one rack space. If that gets your juices flowing, smash that like and subscribe, <laughs> and and come back for more nerdy, uh, poorly shot and edited content uh, with your pal Billy. Anyway, thanks as always for stopping by. Catch you guys on the next one. Bye.